Hi, welcome to LTHS Physics. Uh, this is Mr. Mashar. Uh, we're going to do an example today uh, involving conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. And one of the things that makes this problem very difficult is uh, there's a lot of detail that you really have to keep track of. So um, we'll give it a shot. Uh, if you were to get this problem right on the first go, uh, that would be really good. So uh, here we go. Uh, we're going to have a big block dropping onto a small block. The small block is uh, so, uh, supported by a spring, and we're going to find out the max compression of that spring after the big block has crashed into the small block. So the picture looks something like this. Um, you have a small block or a platform, we'll call that little m, uh, being supported by a spring, spring constant K, and you got the big block up here being dropped onto it from some height H above the platform. And our goal, I will give you numbers for all this, and our goal is to figure out what's the max compression of that spring. Uh, now the numbers we're going to use, uh, we'll say big M is 30 kilograms, little m is 10 kilograms, the height above the platform is 5 meters, so it's a pretty good drop. And the spring constant K is 2 kilonewtons per meter. Okay, so those are our givens. Okay, so uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out, well, how fast is that big dude going when he crashes into the little dude? So in general, when you have an object, one object, going from A to B, so one object going from A to B, your best bet is to use conservation of energy. So up here, this block has gravitational potential energy. Right at the moment of impact, all of that is turned into kinetic energy. So we could say U gravitational naught turns into kinetic energy. And I'll call it K final, but it's, it's the final energy of this guy right before he collides. Uh, so this is big M GH, and that equals one half big M uh, V. I called it I for impact, so V impact squared. Um, M's drop out, of course, and you got V impact is root 2 G H. And you can throw numbers in there. So V impact is root 2 times 9.8 times height, which is 5. Uh, you get root 98, which is, I believe, 9.90 meters per second. Okay. So that's how fast that big dude is going when the big, big dude crashes into the little dude. Okay? Um, now they collide. When, when one object moves from A to B, you want to use conservation of energy. On the other hand, if you've got two objects interacting, okay, then you want to use conservation of momentum. All right? So we're going to use conservation of momentum. Um, so for that, I'll write that here, the total momentum before the impact will be the total momentum after the impact. Well, before the impact, I had a big M, and he was moving at root 2GH. Now, I know that number, but for now, I'll leave it in variable form. Um, afterward, both M's are moving together. So you've got big M plus little m uh, times V. I called it A for after the impact. Now, having said that, um, we'll solve for VA. So VA is big M root 2GH over big M plus little m. And then if you threw numbers in, well, we know that number is 9.90. That's 30, and the total of the mass is 40. So that's 3 quarters of 9.90. And if you do the math, you get 7.42. Meters per second. So that's how fast they're going after the collision. All right, now, now they've collided. Now they're moving together. Okay, so now we have, we're going back to an object moving from point A to point B. So having said that, um, you have to be really careful. There are s uh, two different types of potential energy going on here. The spring has compression, so we have elastic potential energy. But also, the blocks, when they move from here to here, they change height. So you have to also account for gravitational potential energy. Now let's start with the, the spring. For elastic potential energy, okay, 
you need to measure that from when the spring is uncompressed. Well, even before the big block hit, this little block was already compressing that spring sum. We need to figure out how much that was. In other words, if you take this platform off, that spring is going to be up here somewhere. That is zero. That's equilibrium. Okay. This is x naught. That is the compression of that spring with just the platform on it before the impact. So we're going to first find that. Well, in order to find that, we're going to say, well, that block's not moving, uh, so the net force on that block is zero. So there's the, there's the block. There's only two forces acting on it, M, little mg down and the spring force, which is kx up. Um, and that's kx naught. So we just set them equal. Um, kx naught equals mg, and you get x naught equals little mg over k. We can throw some numbers in. x naught equals uh, little m, which is 10. g is 9.8. And k is 2 grand. It's 2,000 newtons per meter. Um, and we get an x naught of point, let's see, 98, 0.049 meters. Okay. I'll separate that out and that. Okay. So we've got a lot of detail now. Um, now these blocks are stuck together and now they're moving down further and they're going to stop somewhere down here. Okay. So we're going to find that x final. That's the total distance from when the spring would be uncompressed to when these blocks stop moving. Okay. Um, something to notice. I'm drawing the picture very carefully. I'm spending a few moments on it. I'm labeling everything I can. Um, if you can do that, it makes the math of the problem much easier. All right. So now I've got one object moving from point A, which is here, to point B, which is there. Okay. Um, so at both points a and B, the spring has compression. So on both sides of our equation, we're going to have, con or we're going to have um, elastic potential energy, spring potential energy. Um, and by the way, since we got one object moving from A to B again, we're going to reuse conservation of energy. Totally different values now, uh, but same idea. So at point A, which is right here, okay, uh, the two blocks have, well, We've got to worry about gravitational potential energy. We have to account for that. Thankfully, you don't have to make zero gravitational potential energy the same as zero spring potential energy. Spring potential energy, you're stuck. When the spring is unstretched, that's zero potential energy for the spring. For gravitational potential energy for height, you can measure height from anywhere. I am going to measure height from here. I'm going to call that h equals zero. And I'm going to measure all my heights from right there. So when I first start off, well, I have some gravitational potential energy. So I'll, for now, I'll just write that as u g naught. Okay. I also have some spring potential energy because the spring is compressed x naught. So I'll put plus u e naught. Okay. Plus these blocks are moving at that point. Matter of fact, they're moving at 7.42 meter per second. So plus kinetic energy not. Is there any work done by non-conservative forces? Well, after the collision, the only forces acting on the, on, the, on the mass spring system are the spring is pushing up and gravity is pulling down. Those are both conservative forces. They go here and here, so we are, we're not going to have any non-conservative forces acting. That would just make the problem harder. All right, so there's equals. So when all is said and done, when they move to point two or point B, what kind of energy do they have? Well, we've established that's zero gravitational potential energy. We don't have to worry about that. They're done moving, so they don't have any more kinetic energy. The only thing they got left is spring potential energy. We squeeze that spring a little more. We've put some more energy into that spring. So that's U elastic final. Okay. Now here's where the detail comes in. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll work right here. So U gravitational naught, that's uh, the total mass 
which is big M plus little m, okay, g, what's that height? Well, I don't know the number. <laughs> this is the height. But I do know it's the red arrow minus the blue arrow, xf minus x naught. So the, the, the magnitude of that height is xf minus x naught. So I'll write that in here. That's x final minus x naught. Okay, so that's our first term. Plus uh, elastic potential energy. That's 1 half k x naught squared. Plus the uh, initial kinetic energy of the two blocks immediately after the impact. That's one half their total mass, okay, VA squared. That was the velocity immediately after the collision. And that's got all going to equal the final elastic potential energy, which is one half K X final squared. We're looking for X final. Now you might note it comes in two places. It's right there and it's right there. So, and one of them squared and one of them ain't. So you might see what's going to be eventually coming to solve for X final. Uh, next board, I'll do some more detail. Okay, so anything I know an expression for, I'll sub in. So for instance, in the first term, we got big M plus little m g. Okay, I'm trying to find x final. x naught, I had an expression for. It was little m g over k. So I'll put that in here. Little m g over k. That's my first term. Um, our second term is plus one half k x naught squared. Well, there was x naught, so I got to square that. So it's m squared g squared over k squared. So that's our second term. That's our one half k x naught squared plus our kinetic energy. One half total mass v a squared. Well, v a was this, so I have to square that. I'm going to square that expression. So we've got. Um, m squared, the root 2gh just becomes a 2gh over the bottom of that squared, so big M plus little m squared, okay? That all equals 1 half k x final squared. Huh, okay. I'll do one row of simplification. Now at this point, by the way, we're done with physics. We're doing math now, okay? And, and again, sometimes it's kind of easy to get lost in math, but we are now done doing the physics and we're just solving for xf. Uh, so I will do a couple little things. For instance, I'll do a little canceling here, I'll do a little canceling here, and then we'll plug numbers in. So we end up with big M plus little m g times xf minus little m g over k. That doesn't change. We got 1 half k, oh, Better yet, one of those k's drops out, right? So we've got m squared g squared over 2k. So little m squared g squared over 2k. By the way, be careful. We've got a little m in this equation and we've got a big m in this equation. This is little m. This is a 10 kilogram platform. Plus um, this, the half and the two cancel, one of these cancels, so this squared goes away. And so you end up with big M squared times GH over big M plus little m. And that all equals 1 half K X final squared. <sighs> all right, now we're ready to plug in some numbers, all right? So I'll do one line of substitution and then uh, we'll write the answer, or a couple lines of substitution actually, we'll write the answer down. You may want to check, make sure you can do it, okay? So here we go. This combined is 40. G is 9.8. We're trying to find x final minus little m, which is 10, times 9.8 over k, which is uh, 2,000. There's our first term. Plus little m squared, so that's 10 squared times g squared, which is 9.8 squared over 2 times 2,000 is 4,000 plus this term, so that's 30 squared times 9.8 times 5 over, uh, this is 40. Okay, let me double check that. Yep. All right, equals 1 half k is 2,000 xf squared. Okay, 
Now to make it simple, I'm going to go ahead, um, I went ahead and plugged some of these numbers into a calculator. So for instance, this is 392. So this is 392 times XF. Okay, minus, you take 392 times all that, you get, I got 19.21, might want to double check me on that. Um, plus, this term, which ends up being very small, um, 100, a um, thousand, 10,000 over 4,000, I got 2.40, roughly. Um, so it's not a very big term. Plus, all this crazy stuff um, gives you 1,102.5. Okay, and that all equals 1,000xf squared. Okay, the, the next thing I did is I put everything on one side of the equation. I combined like terms. So we got 1,000xf squared. So I'm doing this side as my positive side. Um, minus 392xf because I'm moving that over to here. Okay. Um, and then when I, when I combined this, this, and this, I got a positive number. I threw it over there. It became negative. It's minus. I got 1,085.7. Okay, and that all equals zero. We've got a quadratic formula. Before I started plugging stuff in, I, went to, I divide everything by 1,000. So my final equation was this. I'm just dividing everything by 1,000. Okay, so you're going to get two answers for XF, all right? I got, when I did this, and you might want to check me, but when you do quadratic formula, you get XF equals 1.256 meters or negative 0.864 meters, okay? Now, which one do you pick? Well, I mean, you're going to pick the positive one because we're looking for the positive answer. However, this number actually has a physical significance, okay? What's going to happen is when you drop this big guy onto here, the spring is going to compress. This is your XF. That's the 1.2 something number, okay? But then what's going to happen? When it's going to go fly upward, it's going to go past equilibrium, and it's going to go a certain height above equilibrium. Guess what that height is? That's that number there. So it actually has a significance. Now, we don't need it in this problem, but, but it's there. Okay. Um, the last thing we could say is, how far did the spring move? What's the change in x? Well, that's really simple. Okay. That's just xf minus x naught. So if they asked you for that, if you, if you wanted to find delta x, you would you just do xf minus x naught. Remembering that x, this is xf, and x naught was 0.049. So when you subtract those, you get 1.207. OK. So it depends what they ask you in a problem. Do they ask you for the final position, or do they ask you for the change in position um, for the masses on the spring? So that's an example of using uh, conservation of energy twice and conservation of momentum. Uh, and being very, very, very careful with details uh, to figure out some information about two blocks colliding. Uh, one more note, uh, well, actually two more notes. The first one, um, I'd be very careful with your drawing. Label every distance very, very carefully. It's easy to get lost in, in, if you're not actually drawing the pictures out. But the more important thing, the more important takeaway from this, a common error that people make is they'll set this MGH up here, and they'll set that equal to energy down there. Okay, Why can't we do that? Why can't we just do this big MGH um, equals, and then you could say 1 half kx squared and all that stuff? Well, what kind of collision occurred here? Well, it was an inelastic collision. And in inelastic collisions, you lose energy. That mechanical energy turns into heat and sound and such. So we could not use conservation of energy to get from here directly to here. We had to do all this to get from one to the other. So 
Um, be careful when you use conservation of energy. Make sure you're not losing energy somewhere, uh, for instance, in this case, in the collision. Now, if you wanted to go further with this problem, you could actually calculate how much energy was lost in that collision. Um, it's actually a pretty easy calculation, but I think we'll leave it here for now. All right, so thank you very much. Uh, uh, that was the hardest or the longest of the problems in, in, uh, in chapter, uh, chapter 9 for now. Um, the other, two other examples are shorter.